But I would also, we would also like to thank those members of the Senate uh, Legislative Black Caucus uh, and the Women's Caucus and all of their efforts to assist us in defeating this legislation. We are certainly very disappointed that the Senate chose to pass 529. It, in our opinion, it invades the sanctity of a woman's right to choose as established by Roe versus Wade. Uh, it also places a chilling effect on those members of the medical profession who would come to a predominantly minority community, such as the African American community, or other communities of color, and will impose upon them an obligation that you will not have in the larger majority community. Uh, that is also, I believe, going to be impacted if this becomes law uh, by their ability to obtain affordable malpractice insurance. And it's a, in place a tremendous chilling effect on those citizens in, the, in, in communities of color to be able to obtain quality, affordable, reproductive health care. And I've also been joined by the senators, so. Well, I, I would predict that if this bill becomes law, Georgia is going to be wasting taxpayer dollars in fighting off the lawsuits because this is an unconstitutional bill. Wouldn't it be far better for the leaders of this state to put their money, the taxpayer dollars, invest in public health services, invest in expanding the number of women who can access family planning services? Uh, we need a million and a half dollars in the budget for a Medicaid waiver on the federal level. What does that do? It would bring nine, 90 federal dollars for every $10 we spend on family planning. It would expand the number of women in Georgia that can get family planning. We want abortion to be safe, legal, and rare. And you get to that place by funding family planning services, by funding teen sex education, taking a prevention first, and so that every child is a wanted child and the pregnancies are intended, not unintended. Now I'll just say, we've seen over and over down here the majority party uh, is led by the nose, by the uh, right to run your lifers. That's who's behind this bill. Uh, they, 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 they say, and we hear it every day, we're for individual freedom, we're for liberty, we're for government out of your lives. Well, this bill puts government right back in the bedroom. Once again, interferes with uh, women's right to privacy with their doctor and their own medical decisions. Uh, and it flies in the face of all the court rulings over the years that say we have a constitutionally protected right to determine our reproductive health choices that meet the needs of us and our families. Um, the only thing I want to say, first of all, let me, I want to thank my colleagues, particularly the uh, female senators who led this fight, Senator Tate, Senator Butler, Senator Orrock, who did sterling work on this issue. Uh, but the only thing I'd want to add to what's already been said is uh, there is a certain irony uh, for an anti civil rights party uh, like this Republican Party to be promoting what they want to bill as a pro civil rights piece of legislation when they have fought against every uh, piece of civil rights legislation uh, going forward, whether it be hate crimes, whether it be uh, uh, racial profiling in particular. Uh, uh, it's an irony that they would report to uh, uh, say that they're trying to help people of color, women of color, children of color, at the same time that they have such a disgraceful record on civil rights issues. Uh, but uh, as Senator Arum said, they're pandering to their, uh, their right-wing uh, friends, uh, which is controlling uh, their party uh, this day and every day we're down here at the state legislature.
individuals and the ways of women to make a decision for their own um, family, for their own selves. Let them become educated. Let's make sure that the funding is there for them to become educated and make wise decisions as to if uh, what they want to do with their lives and their families. So, uh, you said you want abortions to be rare, but the numbers suggest they're anything but rare. I mean, and you know why? Because we've been cutting public health services, public health funding has been cut to the bone in this state. And there's another 10% cut in the recent budget. Uh, the, the, for, the, for the last uh, six, eight years, public health budgets have taken a cut. And public health services are the way that low-income women have any access to family planning and to reproductive health services. So, yes, unintended pregnancies go up. Right now there's a waiting list. You cannot go to a public health clinic and get family planning services. They put you on a waiting list for four to six weeks. By that time. There's two opportunities for a pregnancy in six weeks. Two opportunities for a woman to have an unintended pregnancy. That's why uh, abortion could be rare when you lower the number of unintended pregnancies, but you do that with teen sex education and you do that with family planning services. And that's the road that we want to see Georgia go down. But these same folk that pr pr make proposals like this, you know, that back the Georgia uh, right to run your lifers, are not at all necessarily going to see that the money's in the budget for public health services. So, so essentially, you cannot look at those statistics in isolation. They do not exist in isolation outside of 